This is my first Funko Pop Muhammad Ali figure. It's pretty cool. He even got the Everlast shorts and shoes on. Pretty legit. And the gloves. I like it. It's pretty cool. What do you guys think? Welcome back guys. Thank you for subscribing to my channel. For the people that are brand new, hit the subscribe button now. So today I'm going to be talking about what it's like working in a NOC or working as a NOC engineer. NOC stands for Network Operation Center. So what does a NOC do? NOC pretty much monitors network for the entire enterprise. So for example, any company that you have previously worked for or you've seen or you've heard about, they all have a network operations center a building or a floor where all the network engineers sit down and they pretty much monitor the network for the whole company. Now, the network could be in other countries, it could be in other cities, it could be all different types of things. So they have various tools within an application system that you could pretty much look at and tell if something is down or if something's up. And uh, if there is something that requires their attention to go and take a look at, they remotely log into it to see what's wrong so they could have some sort of a status on it. The reason I qualify to talk about this is because I used to have two jobs as a NOC engineer. Um, I used to work on level two in the NOC for IPsoft back in New York City and right across Water Street across Battery Park. So 17 Straight Street, I used to work over there for like about a good two years doing um, level two knock stuff and uh, really a good start to my career. And uh, I would like to share some of the things that I used to do. And, you know, it may help out people that are trying to get into this field. And, uh, you know, definitely um, you really get your hands wet over there. So um, the second job that I had in the knock was as an escalation engineer on level three. And uh, this was with Atreon networking. I remember graduating from college and uh, just, you know, looking for my first job. Um, obviously I just wanted to pretty much land a job somewhere. And uh, I applied everywhere and New York City is pretty much, uh, you know, if you live around New York City, you never really have to wait too long to get a job. And that's just the truth about it, right? So I applied for uh, like about four or five companies and the first one to reach out to me was IPsoft. I started working for IPsoft in the NOC um, for CROS. CROS is Cisco Remote Operation Services. So what they do is you're pretty much like a Cisco Red Badge employee, but you're actually working for a third party and you're working on different clients and you're normally like assigned a client. So that's your go-to client. So if anything happens to them, you pretty much jump into that and figure out things. But then if that client is pretty stable, then you also help out other clients and that's how that works. But I was part of the CROS team and uh, what, one of my first clients was AECOM. AECOM, if you guys Google it, it's one of the largest uh, architecture um, building company. Uh, they have built a lot of skyscrapers throughout the world. And uh, so I was pretty much monitoring their network, and helping their IT staff figure out what's wrong with their network if something would go down. Um, and I would always go into their environment and kind of optimize it too at the same time. Like if I don't see a configuration right or something, I would raise it for somebody to fix it because at that time I didn't have the experience to do it myself. And obviously not everything you could just look at and right away know that the configuration is wrong unless something is not working, right? There were SNMP traps were configured in those servers. So anytime uh, one of those servers gateways would go down, it would send uh, an alert to the monitoring system that, hey, this server just went down or this uh, gateway just went down. So when you actually set up SNMP traps, Every 30 seconds, the server is sending pings to the gateway, the monitoring server. Now, what happens is that when you send the ping to the gateway or the whatever you're trying to monitor, you send pings to it. If within those 30 seconds, you don't get a ping back, 
monitoring system gets alerted and it's like hey i'm not getting a ping back from the server or from this gateway there is something wrong so that's when it goes and creates an alert it's like a pop-up or a notification on the application that tells you all kinds of information about the device or a gateway or a server so you go click on that you look at it it tells you the ip address the default gateway it'll tell you the location of the device it'll tell you what kind of device it is and all kinds of other information so you pretty much get that ip address um, you try to log into the gate otherwise you can always log into the next hop and then get in through like a, a telnet or something from that from that device into the one that's not working and then you could kind of run various commands and kind of see if what is the gateway or a server or something really down or is it like a false alarm a lot of times packets will not reach their destination and that's kind of normal so it would cause false alarms so you just have to make sure you suppress the false alarm or maybe adjust the thresholds and um, you know you just move on and uh, look out for the next one now there are a lot of times when you actually run into an actual problem right so what do you do then and that's when you go ahead and actually start looking at different things and different configurations on that device to see what could possibly go wrong with that right so that's where all the troubleshooting comes in and uh, like in my case i was level two at that time so i would engage uh, senior level engineers to help me with that if i wasn't fa able to figure it out myself so um some of the side duties that i did over there were like uh, get the nat ip address from the public and you know device down troubleshooting configure devices or do um, export configurations from routers so you just you know log into a router and you know export the configuration and make backups of it and stuff like that or do like health checks on servers and routers like how long what is the uptime on those and if they haven't been rebooted for the longest time then you would create a change window and pretty much do the reboots on them monthly or something to keep them healthy some of the devices i would log into they haven't been rebooted in about a year and a half or something right so that's really bad because it could um really bog down the servers so you really have to make sure that every two to three months you have to reboot these devices to keep it a good health check um, other than that i mean you also had um, like a ticketing system it's called service now so what happens is um, people would um, we, our clients had access to it too so they would either, either create the tickets to take a look at like you know something's not working or something's escalated to level two they would just you know put it in in your team and then somebody from your team whoever looks at it could pick it up and then you just take a look at that and see what has been done what kind of documentation is on that ticket and what the device is and you just you know do your research on it and try to figure out what the root cause is and uh, a lot of times those tickets will go to the level three because they do all the root cause analysis so that's pretty much what i did for ipsoft uh it probably gives you a good idea of what i did there so um but yeah so now let's talk about my next job that i worked as a level three for atreon networking yeah no i understand why don't you dump the five million shares you know do it first thing tomorrow morning when the market opens and then we'll talk about the rest later all right bye oh hey guys so atrion networking so that was my second uh job working on level three escalation three um and uh, a very interesting job uh, of course i got a pay raise because i was working on a higher level and by this time i was pretty much the senior guy i was pretty much the go-to guy there among four other guys uh, in the company that would take on escalation cases and uh, you would not monitor the network anymore because you would have level one and two do that and level two and one they would monitor and if something goes down or something goes wrong they do their level best to troubleshoot the environment and if they can't figure it out then they would reach out to you and either get help 
And if they really can't figure it out and they, it's, it's completely out of their league, then they would just pretty much ask your help to work on it. Now, the monitoring system over there was Nimsoft. So uh, we would not really monitor that. We would just get the escalations to work on. Um, and, um, you know, a lot of times we would just get um, managers to call us, be like, hey, you know, one of the clients really is on the phone right now. Can you just take their call or something like that? Um, and sometimes you work on service now on some escalation tickets. Um, and then you would do a lot of root cause analysis. Pretty much you have cases that are pending that we don't have a resolution for. So you would look at them, troubleshoot them, try to recreate the problem in a, in a separate environment and see what could be the possible thing that's wrong. Now, the cases I worked on lasted for days, right? Then, you know, a lot of times you would you would have to engage the backend teams from the vendor to jump in and help us out with that because it could be a code issue, it could be a bug, you know, maybe needs a patch upgrade or something. And that's another thing we did was we did a lot of server upgrades. We would have to create like uh, maintenance windows for those and and do all the service server upgrades at nighttime. Uh, I've done like uh, database rebuild. A lot of times uh, we would see CPU spikes on the servers and um, we would try to suppress those or, or purge. A lot of trace collections as well. You, uh, we would look at a lot of SDL traces. You know, you have to enable detail login onto the server and then you have to try to recreate the problem. And if you're able to recreate it, then you could pretty much capture that problem within that five minutes. And then you pretty much do an export of that trace. And then you try to find out what the problem might be. Now, a lot of times the challenge was uh, these problems would be intermittent. So you can't really replicate it when you want to. So you can't really capture that problem and you don't know when it's going to happen again because it's like so sporadic and spontaneous, right? So so there will be a lot of challenges there. And I mean, you would also fix uh, internal networks. Like let's say if a trunk goes down or if MPLS circuit goes down or if a VPN tunnel goes down, then you have to jump in to lay, take a look at if it's from the provider's end, if it's from your end, uh, what could what is the possible a root cause of this and how can we bring it up as fast as we can? And a lot of times we would notice that there will be design flaws with the client's environment because they would have a single trunk uh, going down and then pretty much no backup trunks or no redundant trunks configured to go um, take, take offload that traffic onto the uh, secondary trunk. So, so there will be a lot of different things you would get involved in. It would be very, very busy. But yeah, I mean, pretty much that's all what Network Operations Center engineers do. Um, so there's different levels like tier one, tier two, tier three. And uh, I was lucky enough to be part of tier two and tier three at two different jobs. So, um, but yeah, it was a great, great technical experience. Um, at the start of my career and uh, you know I would recommend that for anybody who's trying to get into this field because that way you would really get thrown out to the wolves and you'll figure your way out so when you go to these other jobs go through these technical interviews you would really be on your a-game because you have troubleshoot like one of the most complex networks out there and uh, it would really really help in that case now, don't get me wrong, because that was the beginning of my career. And my next job after that was in a deployment team, which is completely different than what I was doing in the NOC, because NOC and deployment is a whole nother ball game. And um, so that was my next job. But maybe I could talk about my deployment experience and what kind of stuff I did there. And uh, that could be my next video. Um, you guys let me know. Anyway, uh, I think I'm going to wrap it up. I don't want to make it too long because I don't want to bore you guys with all this uh, stuff. I'm sure there are people who are just watching who don't care about this stuff. And if you are, then I don't know why you're watching. But but yeah, I mean, uh, maybe my next video is going to be about deployments. Let me know in the comments. Uh, hit the like button. I appreciate you all staying tuned. And, you know, give me a sub if you haven't. But uh, 
let's get in touch till next time see you guys later